Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome into the video. So we have a massive week coming up in the stock market with a bunch of catalysts that we need to prepare for, including the FOMC meeting, the GDP report, and also a massive week of earnings coming up. So in this video, I'll be giving my thoughts, what I expect from each of these events, some trade ideas, what to prepare for, and more. So let's go ahead and get into it. So first off, we have the next FOMC meeting and rate decision on Wednesday the 27th, where we will find out whether the Fed hikes rates either 75 basis points or 100, which would be a full percentage point. So the market is currently pricing in an 80.5% chance for the 75 point hike and a 19.5% chance for a 100 point hike as of next weekend. Now the Fed usually goes with a market expects. So in this scenario, we should expect a very high likelihood that it will be a 75 point hike. Now it's impossible to know though to whatever decision is made, but one thing to note is this year the Fed and Powell have spoken more hawkish when the market is rallying. AKA when the market is going up, they have sent it back down with what they've said. So these past few weeks, we've had a pretty substantial rally off of lows with the S&P 500 up close to 10% from these lows. And with the market rallying into this event, it is my personal opinion that it is a greater risk now of becoming a sell the news event, which would then trigger a sell off in the market and potentially lead into the next leg down for the market. In the scenario that we sell off early in the week though into Wednesday's meeting, it could also turn into a buy of the news event, triggering the market to go up. So a lot of this depends on how the market is moving early this coming week. So that is very important to pay attention to. And that's just all my opinion and something that is important to note. It's all just a probabilities game with events and decisions like this. So next up this week on Thursday the 28th, we get the number for quarter two GDP. So this is super important since as we know in Q1 we had a negative GDP and the definition of a recession is two quarters in a row with negative GDP growth. So if Q2 GDP does come in negative, that means that we are currently in a recession and that could change some things big time in the market. Now let's take a look at historical charts the past eight times that the US entered a recession and how the market reacted to those times. Feel free to pause the video at this slide to read through the cause of each recession and of these recessions, four out of eight of them were caused by inflationary pressures, which is what our current market is experiencing. The recessions mainly caused by high inflation were the 1969 to 1970 recession, the 1980 and 1981 to 92 double dip recession, and also the early 1990s recession. So we'll be using the S&P 500 chart for looking at the dates for each of these recessions began and ended at, with arrows pointing to the beginning and end of each recession time period. So starting out, the recession of 1969 to 1970 began with the market already down 19% off of highs, and once the recession began, it proceeded to drop another 22% before hitting lows and bottoming before the recession ended. A common theme that we will see with each of these is that the market bottomed before the recession ended seven out of eight of these times with the outlier just being the early 2000s tech bubble. So next up, the 1973 to 1975 recession. This began with the S&P 500 already down about 25% and after the recession started, it fell another 33% before bottoming. Off of those lows, it rose 30% before the recession ended. It was essentially a V-shaped recovery here. Next is the 1980 recession, a very quick one that only lasted six months. In this one, the S&P rose 8% before dropping 20% from highs and actually ended with the S&P at a higher price from where it started at. In the 1981 to 1982 recession did the same thing. It fell 20%, proceeded to rocket up off of lows with the recession ending right at the previous all-time highs from 1980. There was then about an eight year gap between recessions before the early 1990s recession did begin. This was a volatile one with a V-shaped recovery before the S&P dropping 21% from highs, moving quickly back up to new all-time highs before the recession did end. And next up, the early 2000s recession began in the midst of the tech bubble popping. The recession itself was only about eight months long and is an outlier to these just due to how overvalued everything was in the market at the time. Zooming out a bit can give us a visual of the absolutely massive move that the market made from the previous 1990s recession up to the 2000s, more than a 300% move in total. And the Great Recession was the worst out of all of these, lasting a year and a half from December 2007 to June 2009. From when the recession started, the S&P dropped about 55% before hitting lows and bottoming four months before the recession ended. And finally, the COVID recession, which is the shortest recession on record, only lasting two months from February to April of 2020. 
This was an outlier as well, just due to how much and how fast the Fed pumped money back into the market. And of course, this one was a V-shaped recovery for that reason. And all this together puts us to today with the potential that this week we could find out whether we are currently in a recession or we could find out that we're not currently in a recession. Now, what can we learn from the historical price action of these other recessions? So number one is that in seven out of eight of these recessions, the market found a bottom before the recession ended. This is because the market is forward looking and recovery will get priced in beforehand. So this is important to know since we would most likely find a bottom if we do go into a recession before that recession would end. Number two is that the majority of these had violent recoveries off of lows. Gains came very quickly once the market bottomed each time. Just the tricky part is knowing when the market does bottom. And number three is that there was always a larger drop once the recession began, though most of the time recessions lasted about six to eight months and like we talked about, almost always bottomed before the recession ended. So my personal opinion is that if we do find out that we're in a recession this week, the market is most likely headed lower in the short term, but we're getting closer and closer to finding an overall market bottom. My gut feeling personally is that the market will have a third leg down before finally bottoming around $350 on the SPY. We have not yet seen peak fear on volume selling and no real VIX spike to 50 plus, which has historically marked the bottom for markets. Now, obviously anything can happen and change quickly, but my mindset currently is expecting and preparing for a third and final leg down. And finally, this week we have the mega cap tech companies reporting earnings along with many other very important companies to the market. The six mega caps reporting this week make up over 40% of the NASDAQ weighting, so expect a lot of market volatility from these reports. Now looking at the calendar for this week, we have Google, Microsoft, and Visa all reporting on Tuesday. On Wednesday, which is also the FOMC day, we have Meta slash Facebook reporting. And on Thursday, which is also the day we get the Q2 GDP number, we have Apple and Amazon reporting earnings after the bell. A few notable technical setups to keep an eye on out of these is Google, which is starting to break down from the bear flag pattern that has been forming since mid-May. If there's downside follow through on this pattern after earnings, this could easily go down to new 52 week lows and fill the long term gap at around 97.85. Support levels to watch here are at 106.5, 101.39, and then the 97.85 gap fill, and which would be a super attractive entry for long term investors if it was to get down there and fill that gap. Next up, taking a look at the technical setup on Apple, we can see that it is back testing and starting to reject off the long term trend line. This is a potential reversal setup to send it back down after the 20% rally off of June lows if there is downside this week. A big level to watch is that 150 to 151.5 level as well. A break and close below that level can switch the trend back down and make this an attractive play for short slash puts. I've personally been pretty vocal about how I believe that Apple is the most overvalued mega cap tech stock and I am personally in puts right now but it's definitely risky to bet against the arguable greatest company in the world. Another visual for a very bearish scenario would be if this right shoulder of the head and shoulders patterns forms and plays out to the downside. And one more interesting setup to keep an eye on is Amazon, which leans to the bullish side if it can break above trendline resistance with upside towards the $140 gap fill area. Though personally, I do think that this is a very tough fundamental setup for Amazon into this earnings report. It's already had a pretty substantial rally off of recent lows and their profit will take a big hit this quarter from the energy expense and likely continue lower consumer spending. Amazon also did not optimize for great Q2 numbers as they moved Prime Day back a month this year into July in which it will be taken into account for Q3, the quarter that they are now optimizing for, for those earnings. So there's a decent chance in my opinion that the Q2 numbers are ugly here, but Q3 guidance could be much better than expected. So those are my thoughts and opinions on what we can expect from this massive week of catalysts coming up. If I did provide some value to you and you did enjoy the video, make sure to like button and subscribe. It helps out a ton and I would greatly appreciate that. For anybody interested in joining the private Discord chat, that is the first link down in the description. Get all my personal trade alerts and nightly watch lists and more. And good luck in the market this coming week. I will catch you all next week. Peace out.